It's March 24th and we are well into our stay at home orders and our coronavirus experience. And we're probably going through a whole lot as we navigate this, what may be our new normal and what may be the refinement of our lives and sort of the element of discernment that's starting to occur as we wake up and say, is this the life I've created for myself? Outside of the responsibilities of work and our to-do lists, is this my home? Or as David Byrne from The Talking Head said, is this my beautiful wife? Is this my beautiful house? Or maybe you're not feeling that way. Um, it's an amazing time to take stock in the life you've created for yourself, whether it was intentional or accidental. And to navigate the challenges that might have might be going on for you as some of your identities being stripped away. Maybe your, so your social identity, the people you hang out with. Maybe it's your work identity, the people you work with or volunteer with or connect with. Maybe it is the identity of, of you going to the gym or spending time in community outside of your home. And so I think we're all learning to navigate this new normal. And for those of you who were around at 9-11, you know, it, it was an event that changed the world, just like maybe when Martin Luther King got shot or um, JFK. You know, these were pivotal moments in our history, and I think we're living through one right here, right now. And you may be feeling a whole lot of different emotions. One minute you're like, oh, thank God I don't have to go anywhere. And another moment you're like, why can't I go anywhere? Maybe one minute you're relaxing and reading some of your books that are on your shelf. And in another moment, you're thinking, I don't want to watch another movie or read another book. Maybe you're sick of walking your dog. I've seen some memes out there where <laughs> dogs are like, are we really going for another walk? You know, there's a whole lot of adjustment that's going on here. And there really is um, a collective grieving. And some people would say, you know, I'm not necessarily feeling grief. But we know that the world has changed. We know it's maybe probably temporary, um, but it's not necessarily going to be the same when we get back to normal if we do. And I think it's hitting us hard in a macrocosmic level, a microcosmic level. And some people would even say it's a little bit of grief that they're feeling as they let the old ways go and haven't yet established the new ways. Um, so I was reading an article at the Harvard Business Review, and it was an interesting article about uh, grief and what we're experiencing together. And I wanted to share a little bit of it because he talks about the different stages of grief, grief that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, uh, who wrote the book on grief and grieving, wrote about. And um, at first, you know, there's denial. You know, there's denial that... Um, this isn't, this isn't going to affect me. It's not going to change the life I'm living. You know, it's not going to touch me. Then there's a little bit of anger. You're making me stay, stay home here and you're taking away all my activities or people are saying you're taking away all my civil liberties. And so you can be angry at people, your doctors, the virus, the Chinese, the president, your neighbors for walking too close to you. There can be this collective anger. So there's denial, there's anger. And then there's bargaining. Okay, I'm gonna social distance for a couple more weeks. It's not really that bad. You know, I'm gonna, everything will be better. You kind of sort of rationalize it in your awareness. And then there's a little sadness when you go, you know, is this ever going to end? Is anything going to be the same? Is my 401k ever gonna make it back up? Is it, am I ever gonna be able to see my elderly mother or my friends? Am I ever gonna be able to walk around without a mask on? So, you know, there's a little of that sadness. And finally, there's acceptance. And some of us skip a few of these, and they're not linear, these processes of grief. But uh, we can skip around. For me, I go back and forth between being angry, being uh, accepting, accepting. Those are my two that I live with. And because I'm very established in the present moment, I don't have one of the fundamental ones, which I think many people are suffering from at this point. I might have it at, maybe at some point. Uh, it's called anticip anticipatory grief. It's when you're not sure what the future holds. You keep looking forward and you're going, you know, 
what is this? Is this going to, if I get the virus, is it going to come back? Is it going to mutate? What's going to happen? Are people I love going to get sick? Um, it's so confusing because the primitive mind, we've talked about this on some of the calls, is, you know, kind of scanning the environment for clues as to, is this a safe space? And yet the whole concept of being uncertain about the future feels unsafe for many of us. So because of that loss of safety, we can be experiencing more trauma, more panic, more sadness, more anger, and a little sense of ungroundedness. And we're grieving on a personal level and a cultural level. You know, some of us are appreciating the way the streets, the streets are empty, but others of us are going, you know, this is signifying something very wrong. Uh, it's a time that I suggest we meet with full awareness and start to name what is going on. So because anticipatory grief is, or anticipatory challenges is when the mind, you know, leaves the present moment where you're surrounded by some things that are familiar and goes into the future, the mind and the imagination, imagining the worst. So this article in Harvard Business Review talks about coming back to the present. And this is a familiar advice to those of us who have been dependent on our meditation practice and our mindfulness practice. But also I know that sometimes it all seems so pleasant when we're studying spirituality or practicing meditation when all is well and the world is so-called normal. And here comes the big wrench in the works. And we're trying to navigate that and we can't quite muster up maybe some of us, our meditation practice to soothe ourselves. So let's take, uh, his, he suggests something that I've been doing on these calls and I'm gonna suggest that you do it once again. Now that you have refined your life and you're probably sequestered in the home that you've been creating or wherever you are, looking around, he suggests name five things in the room to yourself, whether it's a photo, my microphone, my water bottle, look around your space. And I suggest you look with a sense of appreciation, not necessarily thinking about what you need to replace or clean, but looking at what's serving you in your space. And then take some deeper breaths as you gaze around your room and seeing the beauty and the support in what's around you, including your desk, your computer, your phone, including this chair you're sitting on or the sofa. And realize in the present moment that some of your greatest fears of the future that is right now that you projected into have not happened. Realizing that in this very moment, there is safety. Realizing when you really bring your attention into this moment, into your surroundings and scanning your body, you are safe. There's a community here. There's 70 of us on this call. And each one of us has our own way of navigating this challenge. But maybe if you can find it, find the ways in which in this moment you are okay. Find the ways that you feel safe right now. Because what I know is what you look for, you will find. Find the ways you feel safe, whether you feel like your belly's full, you had a nice meal, or you've got food in your pantry, or you've got clothes in your closet, or you have a little money in your wallet. Find a few ways that you feel safe. Perhaps it's as simple as you feel supported by where you're sitting and the environment you're in. Perhaps it's as easy as knowing that you can breathe and the breath moves in and out. On earlier calls, we talked about what business, and I'm not talking about work, whose business you should be in. We know that there's some things that are out of our control. We know that uh, we can do the best we can in terms of protecting ourselves from this virus. 
just like we can drive very safely on the road and there can be this wild person that drives a different way and the same can go for us but we know we can control some things we can control where we focus and when and how we focus our attention right we can control what we're putting our attention on and how we're meeting our mind and our emotions so perhaps you're not feeling lightness of being. Perhaps you're feeling some grief, some sadness, some anxiety. I know uh, I was one of the people that got the coronavirus and I remember lying in bed and crying because I just didn't know if it would ever end. And the pain was so severe in my throat and I couldn't hear. And it was so bizarre because it was not like anything I'd ever felt before. Up until that moment, I had been, you know, pretty mindful and pretty clear, uh, pretty optimistic overall. But it just hit me that I just couldn't control this. So that's when prayer comes in handy. And the next morning, I called my physician. Said, you know, I don't know what's going on here. It was early on in the game here. They didn't know what it was either. But they knew it wasn't the flu or strep throat. So I would suggest in this moment that you start to stay out of what you can't control and recognize it's, you know, if you get sick, maybe it's God's business. You know, you do everything you can and you can't control other people. You can't control the weather. You can't control whether the electricity is on or off. You can't control a whole lot of stuff, but you can control how to meet yourself and your emotions and your body with compassion and kindness. So, Everybody's going to respond a different way to this, to this virus. One minute I'm going to feel good, next minute I'm going to be angry. One minute I'm going to feel good, next minute I'm going to be sad. And I'm sure you're going through all these various um, weather patterns of emotions. But it's important that when you see it in other people as they navigate, that we have compassion for them. They, like me, are feeling the stress of this. They, like me, are feeling the sadness of this. And just recognizing that it is normal and having the same compassion for yourself. So I would suggest that you start to take a look and I'm going to ask, suggest that you close your eyes for a moment and identify whatever residue of emotion, if any, is here. And notice how you're feeling in this moment. Notice how you're feeling in this moment. And perhaps you start to name what's here, like it's a friend. Perhaps you start to name what's here, just like you named the items in your space. And don't overreact, just simply name it Befriend it. There's something powerful about naming what is going on. It doesn't loom as large when you name it. You don't have to have feelings about your feelings. You don't have to judge the fact that you're having an emotion. Simply allow it to be here. Don't rationalize it and say, gosh, it's going to go away or other people have it worse. Pain is pain. Suffering is suffering. And befriending yourself and your pain and your suffering is essential. And there's no spiritual bypass. You know, don't pretend it's all good when in fact it doesn't feel good to you. But if it feels good to you, enjoy that too. Fighting it, repressing it, that doesn't help. We're gonna welcome everything and resist nothing. But right now, think of yourself as a good friend and say something sweet to yourself. Something you might say to a child who is experiencing a boo-boo or a difficult time. There, there. I'm here for you. 
I'll hold you until the pain goes away. So we're going to move into a meditation now and they're generally about 10 or 15 minutes. So I invite you to uh, get comfortable and welcome everything you feel emotionally and physically. Finding as much comfort as you can where you're sitting. And I invite you to close your eyes, but you don't have to if you care to keep them open or gaze towards the ground or your hands. Ideally, you'll be sitting relatively still with your eyes closed, but if you need to move around, you can certainly do that. If you need to look around, you can certainly do that. And ideally, whenever you notice your attention is moving into the future, into the past, or you're scaring yourself, simply come back here to what's happening, whether it's the emotions you're feeling or the sensations you're feeling in your body or the sounds you're feeling or hearing in your environment. Also, be kind to yourself while we meditate. Don't take this opportunity to beat yourself up. Don't try to have a certain experience except for the one you're having. And uh, let's, let's give this practice a go, shall we? We'll start with mindfulness. And then we're going to do a little visualization practice and a little mini loving kindness practice. So I invite you now to become mindful. Mindfulness means paying attention to what you're doing while you're doing it. And right now, I imagine you're sitting. So paying attention to the sensations of sitting with a non-judgmental attitude. Notice the support underneath you. Notice the way you can relax into the support of the chair or the sofa or your bed. Become mindful of the sounds in the environment. Simply noticing sounds that come and go, sounds that are constant, Sounds that are far away and sounds that are near. Notice the sounds of the sounds rather than trying to figure out where they're coming from or having preferences about them. Perhaps you're hearing some subtler sounds, like the sounds of your breath or your heartbeat or other sounds inside your body. Sounds are always an anchor to this moment. And so are sensations. As you begin now to Notice the sensations of stillness and motion, even the subtlest motion, such as the breath moving in and out of the body and the pauses between each breath. You might even be able to feel your heartbeat or some tingling or a sense of aliveness. Letting your breath be natural. Notice the varying sensations and temperature of the breath. And if you like, you can bring your attention to the center point of you, 
Perhaps it's right behind your breastbone or in your hara. Where is the center point of you? Just get a sense of it. See, feel, or imagine it. And you can imagine that there's a light or a warmth. And as you breathe in and out, that light shines brighter or you feel more centered. And you can breathe in and imagine that you're breathing in love. And you can imagine that you're breathing out light. You can even say the words to yourself and keeping your attention down in your heart center if you care to. Breathing in pure love, breathing out pure light. Whenever your attention drifts away, come on back here to the breath or to those two words, in love, out light. And now bring into your awareness the sensation of being totally loved and accepted. See if you can cultivate being totally loved and accepted. And resting in that as you recognize that life loves you. Life loves you. And you can silently say to yourself, may I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I know that I am loved. Silently offering this loving kindness towards yourself. Using your own words if you prefer. May I be happy. May I be healthy. And may I know that I am loved. And for those of you who are visual, you can imagine white flower petals of peace falling from the heavens and the sky onto you, soothing your soul 
soothing your spirit. May I be happy and may I be healthy and may I know that I am loved. And now we're going to share these blessings with someone that you believe needs them. Maybe you have a whole lineup of people on the screen of your awareness and then offering them the same blessing. May I be happy. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you know that you are loved. Imagine these flower petals of peace. Touching them wherever they are. And letting this same prayer travel around the world to people you know, to people you believe are in need. Silently chanting, May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you know that you are loved. As you imagine these flower petals reaching people in confinement, in prisons, reaching animals, reaching landscapes, reaching people and sentient beings everywhere, all over this beautiful planet. Recognizing that your attention can cross the boundaries of time and space and have an effect on the object of your attention, no matter how far. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you know that you are loved. And then bringing your attention back to yourself. Settling into this moment. Settling into your breath, perhaps your heart-centered breath. Becoming aware of breathing in, becoming aware of breathing out. Noticing the way your body responds to the breath. Noticing the sensations of sitting. Noticing what emotions are here now and welcoming everything, resisting nothing. Becoming aware once again of the sounds inside your body.
the sounds closest to you. The sounds in the distance. Without opening your eyes, sense the space around you and the support around you. Sensing the community of practice, the people who are joining you in this moment. I'm going to sound the bell for us to come out of meditation. And as I do this, I invite you to keep your eyes closed, moving slowly from the state of meditation to the state of being awake. And if your eyes are still closed, or even if they're becoming more open, just think about the ripple effect that you created in your community, in your home, in your body, that ripple effect of peace and compassion and love. Take a moment before opening your eyes if they're still closed and bring your hands together in the prayer position, the Anjali Mudra, as you let your thumbs rest against your breastbone. And honor that light and that love that lives through you as you. It's not just in some of us, it's in every single one of us. Honoring that and then if you care to open your eyes slowly, honoring the same light that's in each one of us and in everyone. Love lives through you as you and calls you forth to live a peaceful and fulfilling life. Deepening your breath, opening your eyes when you feel ready. Thank you all for joining me and joining each other on this beautiful meditation. Uh, I want to leave you with a poem by a 14th century mystic, Hafiz. He said, I wish I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. So I think that's what we're all here for is to remind each other about that. So when I forget, you remind me. When you forget, I'll remind you. Just to remember that, you know, this moment is really all we have. The idea of the future, it vanishes into this moment. The memories of the past, they vanish in this moment. This is it right here, right now, where you find contentment, peace, solace, inspiration, connection, compassion, creativity, balance, all of that good stuff, wisdom, contentment, all of it. It's right here, right now. So I want to thank you for joining me, and I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>